Well, good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Warabut Kwiu Chanat. I'm here with uh, Dr. Sirpong Chiwatana Gongun. We are going to be your uh, course director today. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome you all to our first MESDA Train the Trainers course, the MAS Master Class, how to train your trainees systematically, which is held at Sierra Training and Education Center, Sierra Hospital. This is a two days training course which will be focusing on um, teaching your surgical residents, fellows, uh, how to perform the basic laparoscopic procedures. Um, although these kind of uh, procedures look pretty simple and easy, the devil is in the detail. In other words, um, any complication could be happen during the procedure if you are inattentive. And um, I think it's very important to letting our beloved um, surgical residents and fellow know about how to do the surgery safely, systematically, in order to to the patient's safety. And um, but before we start our course today, I would like to invite Professor Kitano, our principal of the Mesda School, to give a talk. Uh, I mean, to give the opening speech to, to all the participants. Please welcome uh, Professor Kitano. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of MESDA, I would like to say a few words at the opening of this course as a chairman of MESDA. Welcome to our MESDA, the very first trained trainer event, 28th and 29th May, 2022 on a hybrid platform, online and on-site at the Sri Hospital, Bangkok, Thailand, limited to the Thai surgeons. The theme is Devils in the Details, Bread and Butter Surgery. Very good name, yeah, title for part I and uh, part one and the way to do it, tubes for life and hands-on training in fresh colors tomorrow. This theme is very important for not only young surgeons, but also for all of us, the, the expert of minimal surgery, to understand and to obtain, uh, obtain this uh, knowledge and something like this. Uh, sorry for that. And then I wish you all uh, enjoy this course, uh, the training courses, and then uh, you can get uh, various knowledge and the skills and useful for to teach the advanced tips and tricks for surgery for you, train, to train the young trainees systematically and simply in the very near future. I hope Thai surgeons will be able to use this opportunity to master how to train the trainees through the many lectures from the expert. Thank you very much, Professor Vietun, for holding this course by MESTA and give my appreciation to Dr. Barabut and Dr. Siripon for chairing this session all day. I hope we all can learn a lot from the expert and exchange the useful teaching tips for TTT each other and then, okay, let's get started. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Professor Kitano, for a great uh, opening speech. And next, I would like to invite um, our another Master Yoda in, in minimally invasive surgery field, um, Professor Vitun Kitsuang Watanakun, to give a greeting speech, please. Thank you, Warabut. Uh, on behalf of Mesa Thailand, uh, I would like to thank all, especially Professor Kitano, our big brother and also big master as well. Uh, first of all, uh, I think uh, this class could not be happen without the uh, Professor Borobud and his team that try to get the best content to show and offer and train our trainees and also the uh, young generation of MIS surgeons. Even though we got uh, uh, 
the situation of the COVID-19 pandemic for over two years. We do not stop our attempt or uh, our attention to contribute the knowledge and also try to convince our uh, group of surgeons who are interested to upgrade themselves, you know, for the safety of patients on the minimally invasive surgery. Uh, this event cannot happen without our support from our participants, our uh, speakers all over the metro regions, and also our sponsor, uh, Olympus Spectronic. You see, uh, Delsa and Emmet, that uh, Professor Kitono very kind to support us uh, uh, all the way along. I think this masterclass, especially debuts on the detail, will be very useful for every level of MIS surgeon. Because as you know, only one who do not have communication, that's the one who do nothing, who do less operation. The more you do operation, the communication you may face and you may see. So I think this is very, very, uh, uh, I'm very eager to see the, uh, like uh, the content and also the, the, the detail of the day view that Professor Wallerwood and his team is gonna present to us. I hope all of our uh, committees and also the participants, the member of MESTA will be together to fight over the COVID. And with the decline of the situation all around the world, also around the uh, ASEAN and Asian uh, countries, I think in the near future, we'll be coming back to see each other again as a face-to-face -face workshop and also the meeting very near future. So hope everyone who join this meeting and also the hands-on workshop tomorrow will be very happy. And please get the knowledge to do, to practice on yourself for the benefit of your patient. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Vitun, for the greeting speech. Um, but before we start our session today, um, I would like to run through all the agenda real quick with you guys, okay? Um, this morning, we are going to talk about laparoscopic cholecystectomy um, and hernia repair includes the groin hernia, incisional hernia repair, and appendectomy, and anterior resection. And then we have lunch. And after that, in the afternoon, we are going to talk about the lab gastrostomy, jejunostomy, and peritoneal dialysis catheter placement. And moreover, um, we are going to talk about a very essential teaching skill, which is a non-technical skill. I think uh, anyone who want to be a great teacher, you must need this skill too. So, and uh, fortunately, we are going to learn all these uh, things with um, our beloved great teacher and uh, expert specialized in minimally invasive surgery and medical education. Um, allow me to remind all the speakers that um, you will have 15 minutes, one five minutes, about a couple minutes before ending the time, we will let you know. And then um, on online participant who have any question, please feel free to text in the chat box and then we will uh, respond back as soon as possible. And on the online um, participants, if we still have time, you are able to ask any question at the end of the talk. And if not, no worries. Um, we will have the session Q&A in the afternoon, all right? Dr. Sir Prong, you have anything to add on? Yep. So due to our time limitation, I think we should start now. Yes, right. please. So we are going to start um, our first section, the master of uh, gallbladder. As, I, as we know, the lab cholecystectomy is common procedure, but again, it looks simple, but the devil is in the detail. And many concept, concept has been proposed in order to avoid by that injury. The most popular concept is um, CVS, Okay, so um, it would be nice to learn from the first expert 
um, Dr. Polisit. He is a young blood HPV surgeon who graduated fellowship training in Japan in HPV MS. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome um, Professor Polisit. Mm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, Chairman and Moderator. Uh, I'm very honored to be speak here. Today, I would like to uh, talk about uh, how to safely achieve critical view of safety. So critical uh, for the safe cholecystectomy, for the Strasbourg, uh, already state that uh, you should export critical view of safety. This is statement uh, was proposed since 1995. 25 years later, uh, Professor Strasberg he updated his uh, concept into three conceptual concepts for avoiding bile duct injury, which uh, comprise of first, critical view of safety, second, inflection point, and finally, bailout procedure. So the first is uh, to getting the secure anatomic identification and when you cannot identify the critical view of safety, you should know when to stop. And last, uh, to know how to finish the ovulation safely. And today, uh, all we three speakers will talk each topic. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Ajahn Vipusit and Ajahn Nanak will talk about two, two topics later. So let's start with critical view of safety. How to achieve critical view of safety safely. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Stadberg uh, stated that for the cholecystectomy, hepatocystic triangle should be clear of fat and fibrous tissue. And second, the lower one third of gallbladder is separated from the liver to export the cystic plate. And then two and only two structures should be seen entering gallbladder, which is uh, cystic artery and cystic duct. And this will, will be safe for cholecystectomy. Uh, however, the CVS is only the state. The, but how? How can we perform safe part to critical view of safety? how we perform, where is the surgical landmark, or how to do it. So today, uh, I will talk about expose CVS safely. First, uh, before going to do the laparoscopic cholecystectomy, you should understand the normal view like this. This is light anterior glycinian pedicle, and this is light posterior glycinian pedicle, which lie in the ruvia sulcus. Uh, the second thing is you should know that uh, in this hepatodural ligament is contained a bile duct, which has many variation. The most common type is superportal type, which runs like this. And for the posterior bile duct, uh, usually run uh, superior to right portal vein, and you turn and go in deep and run along the course of ruvia sulcus. However, there is some kind of bile duct variation, which is not co uncommon. Around 7% to 17%, uh, the right posterior bile duct run very quarterly and join common hepatic duct very low. And sometimes, very close to cystic duct, common by duct junction. So this type of variation you can injure in early of exposing CVS. Moreover, some kind of infraportal type, which is around 2%, is extremely dangerous because the cystic duct and right posterior bile duct join together and it may cause misperception as cystic duct and injury can be occur early during this section. So how, how can we avoid this injury? The, uh, the very important surgical landmark is through your sulcus 
we should not dissect every structure beneath this line to avoid the right posterior bi sector of bile duct injury. Moreover, for the anatomy of the gallbladder, it's not only right posterior sectoral duct. Cystic, duct uh, cystic plate or gallbladder fossa is connected to the right anterior Grissonian pedicle. After we remove the cystic plate, it can be injured to the anterior Grissonian pedicle because cystic plate is fused to hyla plate. And if you enter in the wrong direction, it's directly injured to the deep structure in hepatodural ligament. So how? How can we avoid this two kind of injury? So uh, Professor Honda at the Tokyo Women Hospital, he taught me this theory. Uh, I learned from him in Japan and uh, uh, he proposed the SS inner theory in 2008. He said that uh, gallbladder usually uh, comprise of mucosa, muscularis propria, and serosa. But for the serosa layer, it can be divided into SS inner and SS outer. You can be seen in the, this picture. The yellowish fatty tissue is SS outer that cover or the hepatodonal ligament. But for the SS inner, which is uh, in the green color, it's this thin layer which contains fibrovascular tissue. This is SS inner. If you uh, split the SS inner and SS outer, it is the holy plane, a vascular plane between this structure. And only two structures uh, uh, that you can expose in this structure this is cystic artery and cystic, cystic duct. So this, is te this technique uh, was endorsed by Tokyo Kailai since 2013 and widely accepted among Japanese surgeons. Most of the Japanese surgeons know this theory and use uh, widely in many institutes. So this is the... Uh, perfect uh, CVS, which contain SS outer in the orange color. SS inner can be split out of the SS outer, and the layer between this is uh, only two structures, cystic artery and cystic duct. SS outer is continued to the hyla plate and should be preserved. And uh, Luvia succus should be identified before dissection. Also, hepatocystic artery uh, triangle that contain common hepatic duct or he right hepatic artery. And sometimes uh, uh, bile duct variation can be found here, should not be dissected. So, this is the truly safely critical view of safety. So uh, let's begin how to achieve this view. First, for the port position, uh, I usually use three port in symptomatic gallstone, but uh, for acute cholecystitis, I usually use four port, and sometimes uh, the efficacy port uh, change to 12 millimeter for uh, inserting some instrument such as gauze or needle holder. And for me, I use 30 degree camera because uh, in the 30 degree camera, you can rotate clockwise or counterclockwise for the better exposure of the critical view of safety. Like this, you can see that the cystic duct and common bile duct blend together. Cannot identify any other structure, but when you rotate it to the right and counterclockwise, you can see hepatocystic triangle clearly and also see the rear sulcus and other structure entering this area really clearly, especially in the acute cholecystitis, which is uh, have marked inflammation and uh, trick uh, fibrovascular tissue and cannot identify. But when you rotate the camera, it can be clearly exposed the anatomical landmark safely. 
So let's uh, look at the video. This is a uh, acute cholecystitis in a patient that receive uh, dual antiplatelet. Oh, oh, sorry. First, you should uh, explore and uh, find another uh, another landmark, and inside the peritoneum covering the anterior surface of the gallbladder above luvia sulcus. Then you move to the back side of the gallbladder and then uh, slowly expose the SS inner by cauterized. Maybe you can use hook with monopolar or sometimes uh, Maryland. You explode in this area and connect to the gallbladder blade. Usually about one third of the gallbladder fossa exposed. Uh, be sure that the, the area that you expose is not too close to the liver bed because it will enter to the uh, S, S outer. Then you connect to the anterior side and connect it to the light side securely. And as you can see from this video, hepatocystic triangle oh, sorry, should not be exposed. Because the uh, many vascular structure is in this area. Then connecting from the right side to the left to the right side and left side. You can see this is a SS inner layer. This is in SS inner. We just divide SS outer. For the connection between both sides, you can use the blunt dissection by suction or Maryland and then connecting these two sides together by tunneling it easily with no bleeding because the SS outer is a fat tissue with our vascular structure. So you can achieve critical view of safety without a uh, major bleeding. Like this, this is a uh, cystic duct and cystic artery. So uh, the way to perform it safely is to divide SS outer and SS inner because this is a holy plane that there's no vascular structure. Cystic plate and hyaluronic should be preserved and hepatocystic triangle should not be dissected because of uh, awareness of uh, injury. And we should have a, a momentary pause for the clip and cut. And after that, we just connect uh, the dissection plane this we show that uh, we preserve the SS outer layer and uh, only cystic duct and cystic artery were exposed. So this is the picture of simple cholecystic tummy after removal of the gallbladder. But this is the another procedure. This is the whole layer cholecystic tummy which removes cystic plate from the liver. You can see this is a uh, uh, quite similar operation, but totally different. Because in the left side, you should perform this is in the gallbladder disease. You should preserve the SS outer layer like this, the yellow with fatty tissue, and only two structure exposed from this area is cystic artery and cystic duct. By the way, it, if you do this in the wrong way, uh, the linear capsule is exposed and this may cause bleeding. You can see the cauterized area here. This is bleeding from the liver bed. And the most dangerous part is uh, uh, you can encounter the explosive anterior glycin, which contains hepatic artery, which can severely injure and cause catastrophic outcome. So uh, this is the diagram that shows that finon uh, after complete resection should be shown like this. SS inner and SS, SS inner were, were removed, only SS outer were preserved and only two structures from uh, the 
SS outer layer is shown. Okay, for the key message, critical view of safety is safer by exposing pro with the proper technique and the SS inner approach is a safe part for safe college systemectomy, especially combined with some anatomical landmarks such as Luvia Sokas will make the operation safer. Thank you very much. Please, grab your microphone, sing a song. <laughs> no, ask a question, okay? So please, please introduce okay. yourself. Yeah, okay. Introduce before, yourself first. Before asking the question. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hello, my name is Gritapha Gitpatanapong, MAS, fellow MAS from PSU. Uh, I have a question to ask uh, Ajahn. Uh, that I I saw your I saw your presentation. We we first encounter the gallbladder at the as a base of gallbladder, and if we start at a, another direction as a fundus down, ah, okay, is it a is safe to divide us SS outer and SS inner from the fundus down? Yes, for the fundus down technique, uh, you. Uh, choose expose uh, between SS inner and SS outer and continue connecting the dot from the dome side to the hyla side because if uh, you going too deep uh, it will enter the plane between linear capsule and SS outer and entering that layer uh, you will get this image and at the hyla side and this is very dangerous because you can expose anterior Gisonian pedicle. So, SS inner and SS outer can be used uh, from both sides, from the hyla side and from the down technique. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we have another question from the online participants. Okay, for a conventional teaching, we were normally told anterior peritoneum and posterior peritoneum. What is the difference with SS theory with the old one? Um, I, I think uh, the peritoneum, I, uh, per parietal peritoneum uh, on the gallbladder side is one part of the uh, SS outer layer. It is the same. Yes, but it is, uh, we call in different way. Yeah, okay, exactly. Thank you very much for the question. I think we are 